Now let's apply this in the lab. We have router 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we have host A, B, C, and D. What we are going to do is to apply the PPR on router 1, and we need to send traffic from host A and B to host C and D. Then apply the PPR on interface Ethernet 1 slash 8. So this is the destination based routing best path, which is via router 4 for this subnet 172.20.0.0 slash 24. And what we need to do is to apply PBR on interface 1 slash 8 to have this criteria. If host A is the source, regardless of the destination, then use router 2 as a next hub. And another condition here, if host B sends traffic to host D, then share the traffic between router 2 and router 3. So if this is the source, 192.168.1.1, and this is the destination, 172.20.0.13, then the traffic has to be load shared between router 2 and router 3. If we don't have this policy, all traffic should use router 4 as a next hub which means if host B ping host C here, then router 4 should be the next hub. I configured host A and B on router 0 as loopback interfaces, and I'm going to use router 0 and router 1 to demonstrate PBR in this lab. First of all, let's see the forwarding path before applying the PBR. Traceroute is the tool that we are going to use, so traceroute, 172.20.0.12, which is host C IP address, source 192.168.0.1, which is host A IP address. It shows that 10.0.0.1, which is router 1, then 10.14.0.4, which is router 4, then 10. 4505, which is router 5, then the destination. Router 1, router 4, router 5, then the destination. Okay? And this is the expected path. Let's see the other host. So if we try to reach the same host, host C, using host B as a source, we have the same path, right? Now, what if we need to reach host D using host B? We have the same path. And last thing here, using host A as a source. As you can see, in all combinations, we have always the same path using router 4 as the next hub. Okay? Go to router 1. Enable feature PBR. Then define a route map, then identify the conditional match criteria, specify one or more next hub to that criteria, then apply the route map under the interface, then optionally enable the PPR statistics. Let's start with the route map. So route map, I will name it PPR, RM, permit 10, match IP address, as I mentioned, in PBR, we have to use access list, check here, for use in route maps for PBR only, okay? So we need to use access control list. Let's have a name here, host A source. We will configure the access list later. And by the way, we can't use more than one access list in one match command, okay? Set IP, next hop. Here we need to match host A and use router 2 as a next hub, right? Which means 10.12.0.2. Let me do it. Set IP next hub 10.12.0.2. Now use another route map clause. Route map permit 20. Match IP address host B to host D, right? This is the other condition that we need here. If host B sends IP traffic to host D, then share the traffic between router 2 and router 3. So host B to host D. In this case, sit IP next hub 
it will be router 2 and router 3, which is 10.12.0.2 space 10.13.0.3. And to do load sharing between them, we have to use load share command, okay? We have multiple options, drop on fail, force order means maintains the next hub order as per CLI, the first one first, the second one second, and so on. Drop on fail means drop packets when next hub unreachable, which means don't use the normal routing table destination based forwarding, just drop the packet if the next hub is unreachable, okay? What we need here is load share only. Now we have our route map ready, but we still need to configure the access control lists. Before that, let's configure the statistics. So route map, PBR, RM, PBR statistics. Okay. So now IP access list, host A source. You know what? It has to be the same exact name. So let's copy this one from here and permit IP host 192.168.0.1 as a source, then any destination. Of course, you can match other options like fragments, packet length, precedence, etc. And all of that can be applied on the policy-based routing. This is the first access control list. The second one, let's copy the name. It's very important to have the same name, otherwise it will not match on the route map. So IP access list, permit, and keep in mind, it has to be permit when we use the access control list in BBR, okay? So permit 192.168.1.1, which is host B IP address, but I need to either put host before this IP address or slash 32 and permit IP, which means any IP protocol. So slash 32 here is equivalent to host with the IP address, okay? And the other IP should be 172.20.0.13 slash 32. We need to apply the route map in the interface 1 slash 8, right? Then check the trace route from router 0 in order to see if that apply as we want or not. Okay. Interface Ethernet 1 slash 8. IP policy. Route map. PBRRM. Okay. Before the trace route in router 0, let me show you the show commands. Show route map. PBRRM. PBR statistics. Here, because we don't have any traffic yet, this route map clause has zero packets, zero packets in the other one, and default routing, which is the destination-based routing, also zero packets. This will show you how much packets routed based on the destination-based or default routing, how many packets routed using this match clause here, the first one, sequence 10, I mean, and how many packets routed using the second match clause. Okay, I will get back to this command and will show you the results. The other command is show IP policy. This is important command. It will show you that interface Ethernet 1 slash 8 has this route map and it is active in the default VRF. And last thing, in order to see the PBR related configuration, you can use the command show run RPM route policy manager. It will show you here feature PPR enabled, route map PPR statistics. This is the route map and it is configured under Ethernet 1 slash 8. Okay. Now let's see the trace route. Previously, all the traffic was passing through router 4. Starting from the first one, 172.20.0.12, which is host C. The source now is host A. As you can see, the next hub here is router 2, as we mentioned here. And in case the destination is host D, we expect to see the same result. Yeah, router 2 is the next hub. So it passes through router 1 to router 2, router 5 to the destination. 
Now what if we need to reach host D, which is 172.20.0.13, and the source now is host B. We expect to have load sharing, right? Now it is via router 2. Let's do it again. Router 3. Again. Router 3. Again. Router 3. Again. 3. 2. 3. 2. And so on. You can see it is load sharing between router 2 and router 3. Right? Now the last combination is between host B and host C. So let's try host C here and it should be throw router 4. And here we go. Okay. Back to router 1. Show route map PPR, PPR statistics. We have 24 packets matched by the first one. 96 packets using the second match clause and 12 packets only using the default routing, the destination based routing. Okay. All right. That's the end of this lecture. Thanks for watching.